kind of yes basic microphone yes. cool man cool Great. yeah that's a new that's the new setup that i have now i i started a youtube channel and i mean you know that but i have now this super slick setup with this amazing soft boxes like a boom pole which the boom pole I can't really use for like zoom meetings because it is a little far away with the headphones but then I have these nice lights here. Brilliant. What's what's a boom pole? It's basically an arm that allows a microphone to be closer to me without being in the picture. So oh. because I record my videos standing now, my latest one was standing. And now I can like have it on top of me that captures the sound better. And this way I don't have it in the picture. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Yes. Perfect. Perfect. Great. Excellent. So let's hope some more people are coming on. We yeah, hopefully. Otherwise, go. it's yeah. just us. I mean, the elite always shows mm-hmm. up, right? So, <laughs> and Misha is, is Misha she's coming? coming? I think cool. she's just gonna be a little late, but she's coming. No, it's all cool, good. Cool, great. I mean, you're looking uh, pretty far out already with that jacket. That's a thank you. It actually glows jacket. in the dark. No way. Yes, it does. Oh, yes, it shit. does. You are too much. You have to. Oh, God. <laughs> You're gonna well, have to, maybe, you're gonna maybe I can show you. Up. Let's see. Let me oh close that one out as well. Uh, it's still too bright, but you can see that it yes. glows. Yes, 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 <laughs> it does glow. Oh my God. Oh yeah, I can definitely see it. Really fabulous. Ah, Thank you. Too much, too much. Oh, that's great. great. Oh God, you're always full of surprises, Adam, absolutely. <laughs> I want to know how your um, how your uh, list of um, list of things that you want to achieve are coming along while we're waiting for people to come on. Oh, it is <laughs> going absolutely fantastic! I'm very very happy with it. I decided to change the book that I'm writing on a little bit from the angle and the audience. Instead of being for professional leaders, it's gonna be for everyday people because I realized that's the people that I actually want to help. Yeah, and uh, my channel is growing very nicely. I already have like thirty-three subscribers, so I'm constantly growing. And the latest video that I uploaded had the fastest view count growth out of all the videos in wow. one day. That all the others had like compared to in weeks, like it has twenty-five views in one day, while the others took like weeks to get there. So very happy with that. I also yeah. learned editing on a better level, so I can a little bit more special effects. And uh, ChatGPT is very helpful. Midjourney is very helpful to create my thumbnails. I used actually uh, Midjourney to create my latest thumbnail. So we can also talk about how to create stuff like that if you want. Um, we can also talk about how to use ChatGPT to generate content ideas. Because a lot of people don't seem to know that. I was on a call just recently where a person wanted to use ChatGPT to generate a script for a video. He's doing like this super high level super edited, very unique style of documentary videos. And he was like, how about this? I, I give you the prompt and you tell me what's wrong with it and why it didn't work. Okay, go on. So his prompt was, write me an 1800 words doc- uh, dramatic documentary about Napoleon's campaign in 1840. And he said um, the output never had 1800 words and the mm-hmm. output was always in low and bad quality. That's, that's it, that's a prompt, just one sentence. Yep. <laughs> Good question, Saul, exactly. There was no priming, no yes, priming. Yes, Jojo, exactly. No yes. They didn't give him, they didn't give him any, any information about whoever it is, Napoleon, whatever, right? Mm-hmm. They should have given information about it and then ask them to write it, correct? Exactly. Oh, you are such good students. I'm so proud of you. I hope you're proud of yourselves as well. That's exactly the point. And he was basically using it like Google. Hey, give me that. <laughs> and the magic question is always, if you had given a human that instruction, do you think you would have gotten a good result? No. Why should ChatGPT know that? Right? Like, it doesn't work. Yeah. And then I showed him, like, I actually can share the link to that with you because I walked him through it how to create it in a better way, actually. And you guys can learn something from this as well. Because, hey, you might also consult your own clients on this. Like I have some people that actually try ChatGPT and couldn't do that. Recently also wrote an advertorial with it in pretty much 
one to two prompts, 10 minutes, and it was instantly accepted, which is pretty cool. So one sec, where are you? There you are. Copy link. I'm going to put it into Zoom. Sorry, I have to let you know your, your camera is really shaking a lot. Sorry, yeah, that is, that is, one sec, because I have it on a stand. And for some reason, the stabilization doesn't really work. Sorry about that. Maybe I just wanted to be on eye level with you guys, because oh, if I don't right. put it on eye level, it looks like I'm looking down on you, which I do not. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that. That's better. Yeah, that's yeah. much better. Much better. Cool. Great. Perfect. Anyway. Yeah. Cool. So basically, the, the link that I shared with you guys is the improved version of that prompt. And there you can see, like, I will also share the screen so everybody who sees the recording can also get something from this. So basically, for everybody who is just joining, I had a, uh, like a colleague in a mastermind who wanted JetGPT to help him write like a script for Netflix documentary. And he basically gave the prompt, write me an 1800 word documentary in Netflix style about, eight, uh, about Napoleon's campaign in 1814. And it should be dramatic basically. As it, write me a dramatic documentary about Napoleon's campaign in 1814 in a Netflix style. And he did not get any good results. And yeah, as Jojo and Saul just perfectly stated, one prompt, no priming, how is that supposed to work? And so what I did first, do you even know what the structure of a Netflix documentary is? Yes, I do. Fantastic. And I asked him, is this what you want? Yes, this is what I want. Okay, good. And then I said, you know what? Perfect. I need this tailored to a specific video. It's about this topic. This is my specifications and this is what I want. And it wrote something. And it did a great job. And then he said, well, we don't want to have a character narration of Napoleon. Then I told him, never continue a conversation if the output is off. All right. We added that. Boom. And he was like, holy shit, that's amazing. And that's exactly how he wanted it. Took a few minutes. What did you change? What did you uh, change? Uh, what was, basically the just was the second prompt? prompt? In the second prompt, I only changed avoid a character narration because that's what he didn't want to have. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Because instead of now saying, hey, rewrite this, but without the character narration, it would cost so many tokens in this chat. It would just forget everything again. Makes no sense. Yeah. And that was basically the thing that we wanted to avoid, right? And so that's why we changed this up. And he was super happy with it. And the same is true. If you consult a client that tries to use ChatGPT unsuccessfully, right, or tries to tries to tell you that ChatGPT doesn't work, the quality of your questions that you ask yourself before you prime decides the quality of the output you get after you primed it. That is pretty much the magic behind this. Um, I have a question, Adam. <clears throat> yes. Uh, you mentioned uh, there is a way to generate or ask uh, ChatGPT to give you ideas for stuff. Mm -hmm. And this is what I'm struggling with. Uh, I've tried before. Uh, there is this thing called random object. Like in marketing, you can say, okay, here is this rock and it's beautiful. It is lying on the street. I'll tell you how this rock can help you uh, get rid of blood pressure. Like mm. I wanted to, to say, because this is the most effective leads, right? Uh, like mm -hmm. how, can, how can you get uh, ChatGPT to give you these ideas? So I primed, I, I wrote a whole thing. I gave him examples and everything. And uh, it usually came up with something really stupid, really like, stupid like, um, um, how about, how like, about like, this, like, is, this, this is, is like, like a sky, sky because, because uh, it's clear. It's clear and and this is and how this your, is mind, how your will mind will be when your memory works. <laughs> mm. So how about have this, Saul? Give me the prompt you had and we'll work on it together. Adam, just to let you know, we had two, two Saul there. Yeah. <laughs> he was speaking together. Okay, fine. I know you yeah. know how to do it. Thank you. Yeah. That's my phone. Sorry about Thank that. Thank you. All good. Yeah, just share, share the prompt with me. Okay, Perfect. Here it is. Thank you so much. Then I'm going to share my screen again. So, da -da -da -da. 
All right, random object blood pressure. Okay, your world class direct response copy specialist ultra compelling. Your absolute master grabbing attention. All right, I have an idea how we could adapt this. Let's see. So, hey, I wanna play a fun game with you. I want you, I will give you an object product concept. And I want you to come up with 10 random objects and then find unique and curious connections between my object, my input and your objects. Example a watch and a dice are connected because both of them are tied to time-based events. A watch measures time and can be used in races to time who won while a short dice roll can also decide who wins in a game. Both can be tied to gambling. The dice for roll for rolling and betting. The watch to time horse races, for example, which also can be gambled on. That's the level I wanna go towards. Do you understand? And are you ready for my first input? Perfect, all right. So what do we give it, so? Give an example? Give an example? Yes, a product that you want to work on. What product do you want to use for this? Let's say, let's um, say, a pressure, uh, pressure, or something. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Both blood pressure supplement and cycling promote cardiovascular health, reducing the risk of high blood pressure and heart disease. Sunflower seeds contain potassium. Mm -hmm. All right. An umbrella protects you from rain. Blood pressure supplement can protect you from, are from damaging effects of high blood pressure. It's not really connected yet. Okay, so let me change that. So the most important thing to consider is don't just connect obvious things they have in common but think of the hidden benefits of using them. So for example, riding a bike can be great for health, but it also can mean a connection to a parent that taught you this. We are looking for emotional similarities and connections. Let's see if this fixes it. And the word thing, and the word thing, thing, thing at the top, right. at the top. The most important, most thing. important thing. Oh, yeah. thing, thing. Thank you. So. 
Okay, let's try this. So, all right. Blood pressure supplement. Let's see. Just as blood pressure supplement promotes a healthy and circular system, a beautiful painting can have a calming effect on one's blood pressure and emotional well being. We are close. So, soothing music. Listening to soothing music can help lower stress and anxiety, similar to how blood pressure is regulated. That. Handwritten letters. Receiving a handwritten letter. Interesting. A yoga mat. Yes. Candle. Gentle glow of aroma scented candles. Soothing environment. Nice. An embracing hug releases oxytocin, a love hormone, which can have a positive effect like blood pressure. Yes. Meditation app, compass, family photo album. I like that. So it's more random. It's better. Sorry, what, Chicha? No, I agree. No, I agree. Family the album. family album. Yeah. This is way better, right? So are you more happy with that? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Perfect. And then let's try something else. One more. Okay, how about memory yeah, how about supplement? Memory supplement? Hmm. Adam, I was going to say, gonna say those things those are very things normal. Very normal. The, yoga, the yoga, the hug. The hug. I mean, should I mean, you kind should of put, you something, put something, something in there, something in there, which is, which is like, like the useful, the useful thing. Yeah, that's something that I'm thinking about as well because we have again the blanket, the photo album. So, I have an idea. Uh, two random objects that are in no way related to my input. And let's try it again. Okay, let's try it again with the blood pressure. A kite. That was a perfect input, Jojo. Well done. Both the supplement and flying associated with a sense of freedom and relaxation, just as flying a kite can lift your spirits and provide a moment of escape. Amazing, that's a huge thing. Solving a puzzle and taking blood pressure set a similarity improving cognitive functions. Completing a puzzle challenges the brain. Supplement may contain ingredients, cool. Hammock, relation to stress relief. Yeah, telescope, way better. Camera captures precious moments, can help you preserve your life. Yes, ah, oh, this is beautiful. Blowing bubbles. <laughs> I think we found something better now, didn't we? Perfect. Maybe we can even edit it a little bit more. So. So. Let's try it again. Umbrella. Okay, we had that before. The, before was better. Okay, the, the previous one was better. So that did not improve it. So let's see. Oh. So 10 random uncommon objects. Let's see what now happens. Cool. Okay, I think I have a better way of doing this. So random uncommon objects, we remove the uncommon again. I think it just stopped screen sharing and I'm not host anymore. What's going on? Correct, you stopped screen sharing. Yeah. I'm sorry, Adam, I'm adding Misha, she's here. Oh, good. Please don't remove host from me. <laughs> Thank you. 
Yeah, co-host is also fine, just as long as it doesn't interrupt while I'm sharing. So we are here, cool. So 10 random objects that are in no way related to my input. Neither in function nor meaning. And then we do this. Um, we are looking for. Do you want to raise the thing about the emotional further, emotional further up? Further up. Which one? The emotional. The emotional. Put it further up. Further up. No, I think it's okay this way. We're looking for the emotional meaning behind the respective. I understood, I understood it, takes, it takes, takes the the direction direction closer to the closer to the to the, to the, to the, top, to the top better than better ones than down, the down the bottom. We can try. See what happens. So that choice is already very unrelated. I like that a lot. Both the blood pressure are related to health and well-being. The supplement aims to support a healthy worker while sunglasses protect us from harm for UE rays. They both symbolize taking care of oneself, preventative measures for a better future. I can see that. So you're, you're bringing sunglasses uh, outside when you go on hiking to protect your eyes, but why wouldn't you take a blood pressure supplement when you go hiking to make sure that your heart doesn't fail you while you go? Both the blood pressure supplement and a garden shovel relate to nurturing and growth. Supplement supports health to heart. And so the garden shovel is used to plant seeds. I like that. Like our supplement is kind of like a shovel. Like you already have the acre, but in a way you need to get the right, like you need to make sure that the, what is inside your body can grow and thrive instead of just like withering away. I would say this is the best one so far. Like this, this output. Connection between blood pressure and alarm clock, timing and routine. Yeah, I think now it got it. Like now it understands it exactly what we meant. Supplement Adam, by Adam, uh, perfect. What about what if, about if you give something give something specific, specific, specific like for example, like for example, jo send jo John's, send John's words. words. It's an ingredient. It's an ingredient. Sorry, what? Send John's, send John's words. words. Hmm. That? W-O-R-T. Oh, this one. Yeah, yeah. Mm hmm. Interesting. This is, this, is this is excellent. This is really excellent. This, this is especially powerful if you want to use like a more spiritual approach or write for a more spiritual niche. Nice. Yeah, this is very good. I think we can use this. It's a great model. Nice. Well, I'd say that was perfect. And I will share it with the group. And here we go. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Adam. You are most welcome. So sound is weird. There was an echo sound still weird? when you were sharing. That's why. Oh, yeah. Probably because... Uh, Microphone, oh, it's for me. okay. Uh, probably because I was sharing sound as well. So, okay, Ed Misha's here. Hi, Misha, welcome. Weird, I can't hear you, but you are, you have the ability to unmute. Does it work now? Okay, no, she's, she's rejoining. Tech issues can happen. <laughs> All right, so class, what did we learn from this? 
what did we take away from how we crafted this, uh, from how we crafted the, these prompts? We had seven iterations from it. What did we change? How did we change it? Why did we change it? What made it work? Hang on, we need to list those out, right? Of course. There were seven iterations, right? Yes. So the first one was, what was it about the priming? The priming. General, prim general, general priming. General priming. General priming. Yeah, one second, I'm going to change that. So now the sound should not be weird anymore. So this was the first prompt iteration. We omitted the, the emotional part. Yes, go on. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, please go ahead, Jojo. Yes. I was going to, going to say about the emotional part. You went, yes. maybe you added the emotional part further down. Exactly. And, and then you kind of define the random objects more further, further on as well. 100%. 100%. It was exactly it. Now, from a logical point perspective, if you break the last prompt down, what does it do? And how does it train ChatGPT to do so? When we break this down step by step, work, like sentence by sentence, paragraph by paragraph, what does this one do? Showing it's not fixed, but it can come up with random ideas. Would that be Yes, it? 100%. You caught it. That's exactly it. Even though I tell it random objects later, the idea of a fun game implies creativity, implies variability. Well done. Now, what does this sentence do? Well, you defined it because you said neither in function nor meaning. And yes. then you actually added the unique curious, the word curious mm. connections. Yes. And what, like from a, from a building block kind of like, because every prompt is made out of different building blocks that kind of programs ChatGPT to do something for you. It's, it sounds like you're chatting, but in truth is you are programming it. And so what does this program it towards? What will I do? What is it supposed to do? Like when we think about it, the very basics, I teach it to give me this. Basically like that. I teach it to give me this. I also train it to if this, then that. Without this. This is how we programmed it. Why does it work? Because remember, the, uh, like a prompt before did not work as well, where we said the same thing. Why did this one work? What's different? Compared to this one. or this one. That's a thinker, isn't it? <laughs> Can you go back and show me the two different ones again? Of course. Sorry, I had an alarm going, I had to turn it off. Oh, good. Thank you. This is the one that worked. This one did work. not work as well. This one, I think, was even worse. Yeah. Why did this one work worse than the previous ones? You added uh, that you're looking for emotional meaning. 
Mm -hmm. But I also added the emotional meaning here, right? But but mm -hmm. this one, uh, the, the the later one was higher, which means uh, it was more important. Mm. Is that one? Think about, look specifically uh, the sentence. Look at this. And now look at this. Do you see the difference? You put it in the, the hidden benefits down the bottom. Sorry. Same, but it's 100% correct. You did so well, guys. And yes, Saul, you're 100% correct. The emotional meaning here wasn't here before. Ah. I said for emotional similarities and connections, three or more levels deep. Never used the most obvious answer. What does this mean? Nothing. What does, do I mean by three levels deep? And emotional similarities that. and collections I is not what we actually I didn't understand want. that. I didn't understand See? that when you put that in. So what, what were you trying to say? Exactly that. <laughs> this sentence here is what I meant. <laughs> we are looking for the emotional meaning behind the respective objects. And here, I just said it in such a complicated way. You did. And that's why it was worse. And this one is way better because it simplified it and made it very clear what we actually want. I think three levels deep, uh, it was too abstract for it to understand. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <clears throat> And it's so easy to forget that ChatGPT is not human because it's really, really smart. And sometimes it understands things better than humans would. So we just assume it understands what we mean in our brain. But no, it is just very, very good at pretending to know you and understand you. But it doesn't because it does not think. It is a prediction model. It predicts what you want to hear and gives you that. It's kind of like a cold reader. Like, do you guys know what cold reading is? Yeah. Yes, awesome. Okay, Jojo says now, cold reading. Huh? Cold reading is an amazing technique that if used right, can be very useful. But most of the time it's used by uh, fortune tellers at a fair or something like that. Cold reading basically is, the, is a magic trick that acts as if it can know you. For example, let's see, Jojo, the, the spirits tell me, I see a man that you have spoken with, uh, a man named Michael, um, black hair, driving a blue car. Does this mean anything to you? <laughs> uh, I, I, I have an example of cold reading uh, used in... Uh, networking and meeting strangers where yes. you uh you don't ask questions like most people okay where are you from what do you do mm -hmm. uh, this is like asking for value and mm -hmm. much better ways you go and tell okay you look like you came from a gym because you're wearing yoga mm -hmm. pants yes this is cold reading or you look like it you is hot are reading, a lawyer actually. because you're wearing a suit is that true it's actually hot it's reading a lot more interesting to another person because you guess something about them and that's called cold reading <laughs> yes but what What's you just described so is actually word? hot reading. What's hmm? the first word? The first word is cold. Cold, cold okay. yes. Right. Uh, hot, hot reading is based on information you already have about them. So for example, I mean, cold reading, yes, when you, in theory, when you observe them could be, but most of the time, cold is even more cold. So it's literally just based on, uh, on something that is statistics. Almost everybody knows a man named Michael. A lot of people have black hair and a lot of people drive a blue car. So there's a high probability that you might know a person named Michael with black hair that drives a blue car, right? That's called like a triple predict, like basically a triple read. And usually those fortune tellers are extremely good at making predictions that seem very, very true. So for example, something that they love giving is Mm, I see a person in your life wants to reach out to you. It's a very important topic, but I can see they are struggling. They can't find the right words and that's why they don't pick up the phone. Oh, cool. So 
if they call you, I was right. If they don't call you, I also was right because they were just struggling too much. An amazing book that I can, or like four amazing books that I can highly recommend on learning this is from Herb Dewey, Hot Cold Readings. Yes, I will do so. I think I even have those books. I think I can share them with you if I find them. I'm sure you do. Yeah, but basically, uh, one sec. Herb Dewey has a lot of great books. And one of them is Hot Cold Readings. Then we have King of the Cold Readers. Uh, what were the others? Um, Herb Dewey books. Psychobabble, also very important. Psychobabble. Uh, Red Hole Cold Reading. Yeah, that's the most important one I want you to read. Mind Blowing Psychic Readings. And then from Ian Rowland. So. The Full Facts of Cold Reading, yeah. The Full Facts book on cold reading. So I put all those book names in the chat. And what I highly recommend to read for you as copywriters is mind-blowing psychic readings. Why? Because it is a collection of cold reads based on gender and age, from kid to old, married, non-married, uh, even gay, straight, uh, man, boy, teenage, later, like single, divorced. There's so many things in there that are so incredibly spot on because they rely on things that we all go through through life. It's like the seven stages of life that we go through. And those are they are based on. And you can literally show somebody a text based on their age and relationship status, and they will think you're psychic. So Mind Blowing Psychic Readings by Herb Dewey. And to really understand the logic and the tools of cold reading, Ian Rowland, Full Facts on Cold Reading, is an amazing resource because he is against cold reading. He thinks it's, it's used, like he wants to protect people from the scammers who use cold reading and act as they have actual psychic abilities, which they don't, right? So that breaks down all the powerful techniques, how they work and how to use them and how to defend yourself against them. It's very, very powerful. And the other books by Herb Dewey also teach those techniques, of course, and how you read people better. But I would say if you are time constrained, start with mind-blowing psychic readings, then you read the book from Ian Rowland, Full Facts and Cold Reading, and you will become an infinitely better copywriter because you will understand your audience way better. I actually developed my Sherlock method way further after reading the Ian Rowland book and after the mind-blowing psychic readings because I realized, wait a minute, we can actually skip the guesswork and just deduce based on that because I wanted to avoid cold reading. I didn't want to create another fake technique. I wanted something real. So those two books were highly influential on that. By the way, Georgia, do you know a guy named Michael that has black hair and drives a blue car? CIA actually used uh, uh, psychics to spy on Russians uh, during Cold War. Yeah. <laughs> they, they called it remote, remote viewing, and it was like 65% yeah. correct. Mm -hmm. They had good intuition, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, like they are even like, I remember I once uh, saw the movie Push. And then they had this special edition. And the second edition, there was like this army general that saw it. He said that he saw a Russian guy break somebody's neck in a, on a distance with telekinesis and stuff. Believe it or don't, right? Like you never know if those phenomena are real or not. But yeah, cold reading is so powerful. And that's why I also bring it up for you as copywriters, because cold reading allows you to read a person or make them feel understood, no matter how intelligent they are. The craziest thing is this, you can know that cold reading exists. 
You can know how the techniques work. You can know that the other person is using it and you still would have an emotional reaction because it is that powerful. Yeah, because cold reading, like the moment you feel somebody gets you, you automatically drop your guard because what's there to defend? They already know you. And immediately there's trust. Immediately there's like, I, I can't tell you how often it happened that during a magic show I gave, I did a cold reading portion because I was the mentalist, right? And the people asked me for life advice. Oh, you can read me so well. Do you think I should keep my marriage? Do you think I should divorce my husband? Do you think we should have children? Like, guys, I'm a trickster. That was not real. You can't tell me. I know you're. I know you're just hiding this, right? Because I know the government is listening. Oh, don't worry. I won't spill your secret. Can you please tell me my future? I'm like, dude, it's a trick. Like, it's literally a trick. L look, I wrote here. So yeah, I see it. That was a trick. But the other thing, I, I can sense it. You know something? Like, it's like palm reading. You look at the palm and make things up, and you think, wow, yeah. you know everything. <laughs> Holy cow! How do you do this? <laughs> yeah. And it's so easy to say, because especially like how men and women uh, develop over time, it happens so different because in the beginning for men, health is completely uninteresting. They don't care. They start for making money, providing for their family and the connected pressure with that. It's like, okay, so you feel so lonely because you're working so hard and nobody understands you and nobody understands that you're doing it for them. But you feel like you would just like to connect, but you can't really admit it because then you would seem weak and you can't admit that weakness and that crushes you and keeps you up. And then, oh my God, how do you know me? Right? And for a woman, it's completely different. It's like, you feel you want, really want to enjoy your life and you want to really independently make experiences. But at the same time, you feel that there's a deep longing inside you that just wishes for having a strong partner that you can actually rely on. And for you, Jojo, since you seem to me to be a very strong personality. I, I would say that you probably are not used to hearing no often. So you usually get what you want. You're very assertive in this. And that's why you have such a strong personality. You need somebody who can accommodate that. So your ideal partner would probably not be a yes man because that's something you cannot respect but also not somebody who has a strong mind as you because you would constantly fight. So you need somebody who is willing to handle your heat first, redirect it, kindle it, and then find something together that gives you contra when needed, shuts up when needed, and knows exactly when to tell the difference. And that is something that, is something that you highly respect and value. Am I wrong? I think, I think that's so funny. I mean, <laughs> uh, I, really don't, I really don't want to partner. I've been single for many, many years. I don't want a partner. I enjoy friends. Friends. Yes. Friends. That's what I enjoy, you know. Yeah. But if you had a partner, would this be something that you would look for in a partner? I suppose so. Yeah. There I we suppose. go. But, but I want, want someone as strong as me, for sure. But, you know. Yes. Knows how to go back, you know, take yeah. it back. Yeah, of course. Of course. You want somebody. You don't want somebody you can walk all over. No way. No way. Definitely. Exactly. exactly. It's very hard to respect. That's yeah, true. Listen, wait a minute. Just to remind me that the two books, because I was making note of it, was the mind blowing psychic reading readings yes. and the Ian Rowland book. Perfect. Yes, That's highly fine. recommend those. Let me fine. let me see if I still can find them in my drive, because I do think I have all of them. So, OneDrive, and then I can just like give you guys the links, and you can download it. You don't have to buy it. So OneDrive. <laughs> so let me see if I can log in. That's the one. Log in. Yes. And now let's see. I think there is a very high chance of actually having this. So, Ian. Okay, cloud files. No. My content. No, that's not what I want. Give me drive. Huh? Apps. Damn, this was so much easier. 
how is drive not there microsoft onedrive okay i think that's the one there is also There's another some... way to find any book you want uh, in a thing called Z library or Z lib. Yeah, I think there, you... there should be, it could be in there as well. So, try that so. as well. But first, let's see if I have it, because if I do have it, then there is no need for you to have any, any struggle with that. I want to make it as easy as possible for you guys. So, I'll put that link in you just said, please. Yeah. If I find it, let me just make sure I can log in. <sighs> God damn it, this is so annoying. Uh, this 10,000 authentications for every little bullshit, this is so annoying. Um, like you can't even log into anything anymore. The moment you have a new device or browser, even though it's on Google, they want like your whole family tree, history, your sexual preferences, your DNA and whatnot, just to let you into the damn dashboard. Like, this is so annoying. So, but you know what? Oh yeah, my wife isn't here, so that's not there. Because my wife uses my old iPhone where I had all, had all those that data. So, so OneDrive. Let me try one more time. Face ID is hard to recognize with the microphone in front of my face. <laughs> okay, you need this. Yeah. It doesn't let me, I have to absolutely use it's Microsoft Authenticator app because otherwise dangerous hackers could access my family photos of 1989. <laughs> so I'll sign up with Microsoft, allow, one more time. Thank you guys for being patient. I promise it will be worth it because if you have those books, then you will love it. I don't know. How is this? Are you kidding me? What is going on with you? Yeah, it last. This is sorry. This is stupid. Like it doesn't even let me log in with Google, despite it being used with Google. And then it says it doesn't exist because if you logged in with Google, it doesn't allow you anything else, which makes absolutely zero sense. Okay, you know what? This is stupid. Give me a second. I'm bare in a second. So that library, those books aren't free, are they? Yeah, this is a, a it's like a dark web thing where the uh, government tried to shut it down, but then this library keeps coming up. Oh, so cool! It's like, I've got it's it. like for students, and then uh, you can find any book for free, pretty much. Oh, I got it. No, thank you. Now I understand. I couldn't believe that. Wow, cool. Thank you. Great. Okay. Uh, if I on my old laptop on there it is guaranteed i know that so let me just go that give up with that and i will That's... share all of this with you guys so just took us to the dark web yes let's and go shared, to the dark web shared. that was cool <laughs> man that's cool i love it i mean you know it's light dark web how about that I have, I have another lines. link uh, for medical studies that are also free, and this is uh, also a dark web kind of thing. 
Yeah, go on, man. Here it is. I posted the link. It's uh, it's like usually it's uh, some Russian programmer took all the medical studies and put it on the web, and you can find them on uh, like any any uh, PubMed study you uh, you want to read. You go here, paste the link, and you can find and read the, any medical study. It's uh, it's an amazing link. Cool. Okay, so I checked that Z library, so the Ian Rowland book is not there. Which book are you looking for, Adam? Um, the Full Fact and Cold Reading by Ian Rowland. And it did not find that one. And now I tried another book and it says too many requests. <laughs> Yeah, the Herb Dewey books are also not there. But let me try something else. Let me do a little magic. <laughs> Does this work? I think it looks good. Okay, that's just part of it, it's not the full thing. Oh, cool. My computer started. That's good. In the meantime, while I'm trying to beat the, the jungle of technology here, any questions to the AI, any other things that I can help you with? You mentioned there is a way to generate ideas you wanted to share with us. Uh, yeah. Oh, yes. yes I'm interested to that. hear that. Perfect. So basically what I did is prime ChatGPT to give me content ideas for YouTube. Yes. And that was incredibly effective because basically the only thing I did is to train it to do something that I learned from somebody else. Like the person trained me and taught me how to do it. And then I copied it. So I'm going to show you the, I'm going to share the prompt with you guys directly, put it into the chat. Here we go. And now you can use it. Basically the idea was that I said, hey, I need help. And I need help with coming up with certain things. I will give you more details in a second because I just logged into my OneDrive on a different laptop and it did work. How is this not private? Why are you fucking kidding? OneDrive. Like my computer, like Microsoft seems to behave as if I'm actively trying to hack myself. It's trying to make my life so much harder with everything it does. So let's do a restart. It hasn't been updated in a while. All right, so let's see. I'm gonna share my screen for this. I will find that later. Like, I don't wanna waste you guys time with this pointless searching for Microsoft's constant failure to do basic simple tasks. I know why I'm on Apple. So basically this is the prompt. I'd like you to come up with powerful titles for my YouTube videos. You can of course replace this with Instagram posts or emails or whatever, right? The best titles have the following elements. Then I gave it the rules that I learned, what makes a good thing. Make sure the title is below 55 characters, including the spaces. Never describe what's in the video, but what's the idea, rather sell the, uh, rather, rather sell the result. Instead of saying 10 techniques to take better notes from books, a good title would be how to remember everything you read. 
I will give you an idea and would like 20 title suggestions, please. Do you understand? Yes. And then I gave it the idea and it gives me good stuff. And then I just modify from there. I tried to before to have one specific style, but for some reason it couldn't get it done. And so I just say, you know what, cool. I like those, but I want them to be Mr. Beast titles. And boom, I get Mr. Beast titles. So it's really that simple. And then you can even say like, hey, I like this one. Come up with 20 more like that. And then you get a lot of ideas. And that's so basically how I generate that. And you could even just do it as simple as, hey, by the way, I want to, I, this is my niche. This is my audience. I want to make YouTube videos. Give me some ideas. And then you would go deeper. Like if I wanted to start a channel from scratch, I would literally say that, hey, I'm a hypnotist. Copywriter, sales, closer, former, pickup artist, mentalist, and magician, and want to make a YouTube channel talking that explains the world through the lens of an autistic hypnotist and gives persuasion advice <coughs> for people who struggle with being persuasive. Ideas for videos and or titles that make use of my background and skills. I love that. I'm going to steal that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I also like that. That could be a great video. Because I did stop being a pickup artist because I had ethical concerns. Pickup artist, pick as, artist in as in women. As in women, yes. Okay, okay. As in women, Just actually. Checking. Just checking. <laughs> Hold on, come on, come on, go back to that. I want to see it. I want to see more of it. Sure. Please. Yeah. Sure. So, one sec. Here you go. I couldn't believe I you couldn't actually, believe you shared, actually it. shared it. That's what it was. <laughs> what, what it was. That I used to do pickup artistry. Yeah, <laughs> I have to say there was a weird way how I got to it because being autistic, I had no clue how that whole thing works. And I just wanted to understand it in the search of psychology. And then over looking for psychology, I got the dating psychology. And then I went into the pickup artistry and like how all this stuff works. And then I, I literally used to go, like I almost never went to bars and discos because I hated it. It was too loud and I hate alcohol and stuff. But I had a small little blue book. And in that blue book, I would test dating techniques and ways to approach a girl and then I noted her feedback down in my blue book and collected the feedback. And I was super open about it. Like some women even asked me like, what are you writing in the book? So, oh, well, it's just like different techniques to approach people. By the way, can you tell me, does this work? Is this a good thing? And they were like, you are such a place. What do you mean by that? <laughs> right. And I didn't even mean any of it. I just wanted to understand it better. And then once I realized, okay, that most of pickup artistry is about faking a persona or using a technique, I said, like, this is completely pointless because I want to be accepted for who I am and not for who I pretend to be. And that actually led later down the way to me developing a different uh, strategy about all this, which also helped me in finding my wife, a strategy that does not require you to be a sleazy slime ball that just recites boring lines that anybody with brains and a little bit of self-esteem would laugh you out of the club for. So, yeah. That's why I'm very open about it. I have nothing to hide. <laughs> I would say, I would say uh, more than 50% uh, of, of marketers started, started that way. That way. From, oh, yeah. Jason, from Jason Capital, Capital to, to Eben Pig and, and to, 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 to Oh, yes. They all... 
They all Craig used Clemens. To Craig Clemens. Do you know him? Do you know him? Who? Craig Clemens. Craig Clemens. Craig Clemens. It's a famous so, coffee. You know, uh, you know uh, Golden Hippo. Golden Hippo. No. Don't it's, know this guy. It's like a huge, like a huge company. Huge company uh, that, uh, that does direct does direct supplements. Supplements. Okay. He started it. Started it five years ago. Five years ago. It's a billion dollar company. What? Damn. Golden Hippo is famous. Famous. That's crazy. I didn't know that. Golden Hippo. Golden Hippo. It's like Agora. It's like Agora. <laughs> Funny. I did not know that at all. Very interesting. Thank you for the tip. But yeah, those those are actually things that I would actually do. Yeah. I think it would I think be, it would be very, very successful. successful. Mm -hmm. And yeah, when you think about it, parts of those things I actually did in my channel. Like I actually did those. Certain things of that I have actually uploaded. So when you take a look at that, creative blogs, how to influence people against dark psychology, which also includes like the stupid pickup artists, how to instantly turn enemies into friends, which is very based on my autistic experiences, how to win arguments without facts and logic, how to find your soulmates. You see there's the influence of the, of the dating strategies and stuff. Don't do this. Yeah, that loses somebody's respect, stuff like that. Oh, 26 views already. Good. This is growing quick. <laughs> it's very good. You know, for people who, who, who are looking for that, for them, yeah. it, for them, it's very hard, and you've just completely zeroed in. Oh, I'm sure it'll be extremely successful. Thank you. So, yeah, I think it's so, well. so. So, if I wanted to tell somebody, just be Adam Nasa um, YouTube, correct? Uh, yes. Um, like the the handle name is Convincers Club, but when you look for Adam Nasser, you will find Adam Nasser official as the channel name. I'm a NASA official channel. Yeah, Adam Nasser official. Well, then you'll find it. It took a while until it finally was visible in the search results because I have a gazillion different channels from different points in my life. And I had to rename them all and find the old logins so people don't get confused. <laughs> right. So what was that first one you gave me for, the, for uh, that I, particular group? For which group? The ones you just showed us. Yeah, that's the, that's the Adam Nasser official. It's the name of the, it's the username and convinces club would be the handle. Convinces club. Thank you. Yes. Club. Cool. Perfect. So, and let's see if I can find the book otherwise, but basically because even maybe I even, oh, you know what? Let me try something. I think, I think, I think I found a way. Ian Roland. Boom. Yes, baby. <laughs> yes. Thank the blessing of Telegram that never forgets anything, no matter how often you change it. I actually found both books. I will now save them to my files, upload them somewhere else, <coughs> and then share them with you guys. Bless our Lord and Savior Telegram. So, because I also wanted to show you guys just the sheer genius that that this dude, like Ian Rowland and Herb Dewey had, it is absolutely insane. I mean, I'm already sharing screen, right? You can share, see my screen. No. No. Nothing's been shared. Nope. <gasps> It's gone. He's gone. He's gone. He's gone. Ah, oh, coming back maybe. We got Misha. Oh, yes. Oh, is Adam gone? It look. I think so. We'll what? see. Okay, I've been out of the meeting for the. Okay, I don't know what's going on today. 
But uh, Don't worry I feel about like Mercury it. It's fine. is in retrograde or something because <laughs> I've been locked out the whole meeting, and now Adam's gone. Um, it was a it was a full moon last night, wasn't it? It was, yes. It was a so, super moon, super moon. It was really pretty. Oh, Adam's back. I'm gonna oh, let him great. take the oh, reins yeah. again. Welcome back, Adam. Yeah, I'm back. Thanks. And I see that you are back as well, Misha. <laughs> yes, yeah. I, I'm here for the first time. I haven't even been able to listen. So what is what? Um, you know what? Just go back to what you were doing and I'll chime in when I chime in. Perfect. So to, to clear you in, we discussed, um, like I helped Saul create a prompt that helps him come up with the random ideas that he can use for ideas and copy. Then we discussed how we came up with the prompt and how we got there. Then we discussed uh, cult reading. And now I'm actually finally found the two books that I highly recommend reading. And I wanted to show you guys one of them, just so you know how powerful it is. Then I will upload those and actually share them with you guys, because I do believe that you deserve to know those. So let me upload them right now. Downloads. So that was the first one. And where's the mind blowing psychic readings? This was that one. Okay. So. So I will share the link, copy link. Manage access. Anyone with the link. So this is the first one. And the second one, this is the mind blowing psychic readings. And then the second one will be Ian Rowland. This is actually one of the first books that I ever transcribed into my memory palace. Like it has 80 pages of relevant text and if you have a very good focus and memory palace, you can literally read it in one go and you will understand it. It has written that well. All right, cool. Now let's dive into that because I told you it's important for copywriters to know cold reading and be good at that. So time to show you why I think that. Let's choose anyone here. Let's see. See that? Different ages, handicapped, overweight, Asian, Hispanic, physically female, attra attractive female, gay or lesbian, black female. There are certain stereotypes in here. Now, who wants to volunteer and see if the reading about them is correct? You can use me. 50 years Rodrigo. Old. Wonderful. Rodrigo. Thank you, Saul. Saul was first. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Saul. Okay, so tell us, please, how old are you? 53. 53. Okay. And are you married, single? Yes, married. Married. Perfect. Okay. So we look for a 50s married man. That is page 46. So one sec. And it's very important that you listen carefully. And then in the end, tell me how accurate it was. And I purposefully will not share my screen during that because I want to show you something really cool. Because we're going to do this twice. And by the way, this, you can also train AI with that. You can try in ChatGPT, understanding that you copy that text, fill it in, say, this is my target audience. And boom. All right. Okay, so. Are you ready for your reading? <laughs> sure. Perfect. All right, so also the spirits and the stars are speaking to me and they tell me that you have accomplished a great deal in your life. And I would also get a sense that you have done things perhaps by the seat of your pants. I don't feel that you've been predictable. I don't feel that you do things simply for the sake of doing them 
or because it was written in a particular page, but rather you do things because you are strong-minded. You're a good guy and you don't look your age. And you don't act your age. As far as the future is concerned, you are going to enter into an area of transformation within your life, whereas your future will be somewhat predictable from this point on in time. You feel that your health is probably okay. You've got the personality, you've got the brains, you've got the charm. Your personality seems to be that you're smooth, easygoing. You don't lose your temper easily. You are able to debate different issues that you are able to pretty much see both sides of whatever situation exists. And I would believe that you spoil the people around you because you seem to be the person to be the provider. I would see you as a provider, not necessarily just in family, but to those around you. You have overcome obstacles within your life. I don't think you were born with a silver spoon in your mouth. I don't think you were born as a millionaire, yet you seem to be in a pathway now of your financial situation improving. In this day and age, of course, I doubt very much that we can support ourselves by being on social security. We support ourselves on living week to week. That's basically what we do. We live from paycheck to paycheck, and I would see you moving to a place where the, I would say the, the weather would be temperate. I think it's going to be severely cold. I don't think it's going to be severely cold. I don't, I don't feel it's going to be severely hot either. So sort of like middle, middle line temperature and becoming a little bit more sensitive as far as looking into the past. You've been somehow on different wavelength than those around you, and it's almost as if you're doing a lot of thinking about the past rather than the future. You've been spending time not so much worrying what lies ahead of you, but rather unresolved issues of what lies behind you. If you're Catholic, I sense that your saint would be Saint Joseph. The name Joseph would come to me. It would seem to be somehow significant. You don't want to owe anybody anything. If you have a bill, you pay the bill so that you don't want to become dependent. I would suspect as a child, you may have had some desire to lean towards law enforcement, because in my mind, I can see you in the uniform. I don't know if that would be a military uniform or police or fireman, but in my mind, I would see you in a uniform. You take reasonable good care of yourself. I don't know that you have slowed down any. It seems to me that you're just as active now as you were in your 20, in 20 years ago. Probably your best investments will be in some form of land development. Metaphysically, you are as old as you feel. George Bumser, Burns sums it up saying that you are as old as the person you are with. I believe that you are going to go through a transformation where you will be associated with younger people rather than older. You like to give advice, yet you don't like to take unsolicited advice. <laughs> you do not appear to be a person who is going to hunt animals in the woodlands, as you seem sort of metaphysical or homopathic holistic. In that sense, I believe you would protect the environment and be interested in ecology. You're probably doing more reading now than you did as a younger person. You might not be as competitively athletically as you once were, but yet you still seem to have an active mind. Lately, you seem do you have been concerned about monies or bills or concerned about your own demise as far as you're leaving monies behind for other family members? You would be happier in a country than you would be in the city. I would sense silver jewelry would be luckier for you than gold. And I would sense that as far as you are and who you are and what you're all about, you can accomplish whatever you want to accomplish. You possess certain powers. You may not see yourself as having a particular power, but I believe that you possess powers of observation, the power of intuition. You probably have experienced out-of-body projections. You would be comfortable in reading any written works where man is going to overcome the elements, where man is going to overcome negativity, overcome the statistical odds. I feel that you will be in love with a person. You would be in love with a woman, and yet there would be two major loves in your life, one now and one from the past. And the one from the past perhaps has not been resolved, perhaps has not been concluded, because it seems to sort of interrupt your thinking process or your consciousness more often than not. Perhaps a childhood sweetheart. The person that you would be with now, you may have begun by being in love with her, then over a nine year period of time loved her, but not been in love with her. And maybe now it's all coming around to be like it was in the beginning. You don't ask the impossible. You seem to be eating more fruits and vegetables now. You seem to be somewhat more concerned about your feet. I would sense that you should follow the advice of the Piscian. You should be cautious of the Aquarian. And if there's going to be any head to head battles of intellectual standoffs, it would be within areas. As a child, we would have some desire to be involved with a person in uniform, such as police or law enforcement. You've always been your own person. You could have gone good. You could have gone bad. And evidently, you have made the right decisions. The most important issue in your life is the person you're married to. That is the most important issue. You're able to look at your soulmate, look at your twin flame, look at your life partner, and pretty much that person can make you or break you. The person can stand behind you or they can self-destruct the whole relationship. I would see the person making decent choices. As of late, you seem to be somewhat concerned with your weight. And perhaps from time to time, how long you're going to be around. 
you're going to be around perhaps for another three decades minimum. You have a tendency of being a person of all seasons. So I would suspect that this next eight month period of time you're entering to will be in your favor. And since there is somebody around you with the same first name as you, and perhaps even two people around you with the same first name as you, you're able to hold your head up. You have the respect of those around you. You're not going to bring any negativity or disrespect to your family. You're very sharp. You make a very strong analysis of people and situations. You're clever without being sly. You sort of remind me kind of a Huckleberry Finn, Tom Sawyer type of individual. Whereas if you wanted to, probably you could be very poetic. You've always had the confidence. You've never tried to be the machismo type male. I don't think that's who you are. I, say, I see that you're somewhat adventurous, certainly reliable and probably not too proper, not too predictable in that sense. You sort of strike me as an individual that could be lost in the woodlands all alone and somehow some way survive. That you are not aggressive, but you are assertive. And I think you are inventive. I don't think that you try to be forceful or jealous or cunning, sly or vindictive. You simply need harmony, serenity and tranquility within your life. You give as you get. You love conditionally and you give conditionally. As long as somebody meets you halfway, I suspect you would go hell and back for that person. Basically, if you're in your 50s now, I would think that growing up seems to be that you were at the nucleus of everything. You will always be happy near the ocean, be the Atlantic or the Pacific. I don't think you would fare too well being inland, but I think the water, and also I think the water signs like Pisces, Scorpius, and Cancerians would be good for you. Your future will be as your past has been in the sense that if you project your thinking into the future, your personality is formed, the characteristics and idiosyncrasies are formed. None of these things are going to change unless you change them. Your weight will not change because your eating habits have been pretty much routine, pretty much the same. In many ways, nothing will change in your life, your relationship, your family. I see you sort of as a psychic. I feel you're somewhat sponge-like and I feel you're somewhat like the name Paul comes to me or St. Paul. I don't know if there's a saint in heaven or Minneapolis, but St. Paul comes to me. You're different. You're unusual compared to those around you. I would guarantee that if you ever had written a book and it was about your own life, it probably would end up being a bestseller. I think now that you're embracing the universe, you would be comfortable in dealing with nature, dealing with the outdoors. You need things that are orderly. I don't think you want things that are all messed up. You want to be doing clear thinking and the woman that you would be most happy with will be your counterpart will basically be a reflection of you. Somebody is going to have a background in some form of human resources or public relations. I'm, uh, it may even well be homeopathic or holistic healthcare, but the person that you would be most happy with would not be typical, would probably be younger, I would suspect even up to maybe 15 to 16 years younger. You are heading into a very good period of time in your life now, but I still sense that something you have wanted to accomplish, you've not accomplished yet. I think on some level, you have some secret desire that has not been accomplished. You shall accomplish, you shall get what you wish. Sometimes we get what we wish for. You will be able to accomplish what you want to. And I feel it has something to do with the past rather than the future. In making things right or making amends or resolving a past problem, you will resolve something in the past before you get into the future. You're heading into an exciting future. Without the, within the next 90 days will be the beginning. Good luck. Now, I know that was a lot, but there is a purpose why I read it all. Because cold reading thrives from an overwhelming amount of information. So, Saul, tell us, how accurate do you feel this was? Very accurate. I would say 95%. Crazy, right? A few couple of details may, may not fit perfectly, but still there is... Um... It's scary how how every every person is is the same, right? We're we're no special. <laughs> That's we're the all the same. It, now imagine how powerful this is in copywriting. Imagine if you know that, that you're right. Generic too, wasn't it? It was completely generic. It was completely generic. Yeah. Oh, completely. But no, some parts I thought were specifically very really generic, but other parts could have been less. But I thought some parts. Certainly at the beginning, of it, that's what I felt. Yes. Yeah. Yes, Sorry, that's on. the power of cold reading. You, you perfectly grasped it, Jojo, 100% correct. Cold reading lives from gener being generic and being specific in things that come from that. So the things that are very typical for 50-year-old married males come from exactly that. 
Of course, you are a provider because you're starting to be a grandfather if you have children. Of course, you're thinking about your health and weight because that's when you gain weight because your metabolism goes down. Of course, you want to be next to water. Of course, you want to be more in the countryside because you have traditional values. You want to, don't want all the buzz. And of course, there is old love coming up. Have you checked out dating, dating apps? Almost all the men that like ride their high school flames are 50 years and older because that's when you're reminiscent. You rem reminisce over your past life. You're reminisce about all the things. And as you get closer to your mortality, you become more spiritual. And especially men at that age are very proud of their intellect because that's what they can keep. They usually accomplish something. They have been somebody. And because of the intellect, they are used to not, uh, not get scammed often. Of course, they have so many experiences. So all those things make sense, but it is framed in a way where it feels so unique. And I bet so if we read over the text together with a conscious effort to see what is wrong, that 95% would change down to 60 or 50. Because the overload of information makes your brain force to focus on one thing. And cold reading lives by this, something called self-serving bias. That means you only want to hear what fits you. You only want to hear what you agree with. And so you automatically filter everything else out. And of what remains, 95% accuracy. Use that and copy. Use the books I gave you and train the AI to be able to do that. You will see results that are absolutely off the charts. I used those books as well in my first few. I, was, I used to consult those books for my first few types of copy before I invented the Sherlock method completely usable. I used to consult it consistently when I had a business meeting or when I, when I met somebody new, when I knew the accurate age and, the, and if they were married or not. I read that before and the people were scared. <laughs> I can totally see uh, how I can uh, tell a, a story about a prospect who will identify himself by reading uh, this type of cold reading. Yes. And that's ideally what you want to do. Like they are also there in there as well, a few Barnum statements, meaning things that match everybody. And I don't know if you noticed it while I read it because it was a lot, but there were a lot of contradictory things like that you are not in love with your current person and you think of your old high school sweetheart, but at the same time, it was like you have your soulmate with you. There was the, hey, you are super critical and skeptical, but also, hey, you are super spiritual. There was the, uh, you are a provider at the same time, um, like something else, like there were so many contradictions actually in there that when you think of it, it makes no sense, but it does though, kind of. And by the way, this book was written decades ago, literal decades ago. So I would, I think it was like released 1960, 1970 or something like that something along those lines it's super show, old and it's timeless just like shows copywriting. how predictable we are eh? <laughs> yes exactly <laughs> and we don't change we don't change just like copywriting hasn't changed in hundreds of years it's the same principles we humans abide by the same principles nothing ever changed and when you take a look at it all the super secret hacks Read Breakthrough Advertising, read Ogilvy and Advertising, read Victor Schwab's How to Write Good Advertisement, and you see that all the special hacks from different copywriters of this, oh, flying camel technique, or uh, like this super special five-part formula, it's just a copy ripoff of everything that already has been before. That what, this is what makes Stefan, Luke, and Mario so good, because they don't claim to have the super secret whatever, they tell you this is where this is coming from. Read those books, focus on that. And they give you the principles undiluted as they are. That makes them so much better. That's why Genesis and CA Pro is like one of the absolute best copywriting programs in the world because they don't, tr they don't hide behind a made-up technique and blow themselves up to be the, the best thing since the coming of Christ. But they say like, hey, 
constant study, constant involvement, constant figuring out how stuff could work better. So yeah, I, I hope that was worth the wait. I hope that experience right now gave you good insights and I hope that the books will be extremely useful to you because I guarantee they will be. Yes, they're unbelievable. I mean, I, you know, and from what you were saying and from what, yeah, Sal, it, it's so dead on. Perfect. And by the way, the Thank cool you. thing is you will learn, like once you read that, you're welcome. Once you read those, go to a fair and visit a fortune teller and see what happens. You will have the time of your life. Actually, I once did that. Did I ever tell you that story? Nope. Oh, it is hilarious. So at the time when I was at the time, I was still like mostly trying to build my magician business and my mentalism business. And I always go to Renaissance fairs. I love those. And I even have the clothing and everything. And so... Wait, what, what are you saying? You like what? Uh, I like Renaissance fairs and this medieval oh, fairs and stuff like that, where I like dress okay. up as a medieval character and... What yeah. do you dress up as? Uh, usually, um, what's the what's the term, uh, English word for it? Gaukler. It's basically like a trickster. I was one of the performers always like i always do the magic tricks and stuff and then i collect some tips and then i use that to buy my food and stuff baron nasser <laughs> thank you i appreciate you so yeah like back then my wife and i were not dating very long but we it was very clear that we're gonna stay together forever right and at the time i was doing most of my my gigs were magic it was like a side business and we go to this a fortune teller and i hear like a lot of women that came out of there oh she was so accurate and it was so perfect and so uh, how could you know and she offered tarot reading or palm reading i was like okay i want to test it girl and she saw me and i was like oh i see you want the tarot cards and now i want the palm reading i did actually want the palm reading because i wanted to see if she spots the little things on my nails that can show that you have like a, um, you have deficits in specific vitamins and stuff. You can actually read it here. <laughs> and I wanted to see if she can do that. So first fail. Then, but that yeah, it was 50, 50. <laughs> and she raised like, so hmm, I can see you have not find, found the love of your life yet. Like she's standing right there. Oh, you have time. You still have time. Oh, I see also yeah, you should not use your hands. You should not try to do magic with your hands. You don't have the hands of a magician. You should not do, like, I literally am a magician. I'm doing magic tricks. I have all, oh, you have time. You have time. Uh, I also see you haven't found your calling yet. Um, you didn't find your life's, life's purpose yet. At the time, I already had found hypnosis and I knew that will be the rest of my life that I studied that. So I told her, I said, oh, you have time. You have still time. And then she told me like, where did you get your allergies from? I said, I never had an allergy in my life. Yeah. And I was like, okay, but why were you bullied? So yeah, everybody got bullied. Like, tell me one person who didn't, like, seriously. It was the only thing she got right. But it was all just guesswork based on my potential age and how I looked like and all of that. But she sucked so bad. I it's still pay her because, I mean, I know how hard it is. As a, but the, the, what really was a problem is she actually took it seriously. Like she actually was offering advice to people based on her readings and being so off and so random. Corchester, yes, pretty much that. Um, but basically she was so off and somebody gullible would pay that woman 150 bucks an hour for consulting them on important life choices like marriage and divorce and how to raise their children. Like, Don't do that. Oh, yeah, of course. You're right, Daniel. You're right. She was talking about me in a different timeline in a multiverse. Of course. How could I not see that? You are so right. <laughs> She's very sage. You just missed out on it, Adam. Yeah, I was um, just not open enough. I probably disturbed her energies by being a skeptic. I know, speaking of skeptics and stuff, I know it's 2.30 my time, so it's late, late for you, and we're about to hop off, but maybe next time, do you want to talk about the Silva method? The Silva method? Oh, yeah, the, the thing that basically allows you to achieve yes, everything you yes, want in life? Yes, yes, yes. Yes. 
Yeah, we can talk about that. You know what about it? <laughs> Hold on, just just give us a taster now. I've got to have a taster of it. Or describe how you're going to explain it to us. So basically, understand. in a nutshell, in a very, very strongly broken down thing, it is pretty much nothing else except a very positive mindset and visualization. So it's a very, yeah, it's basically that. And it was hyped up as like the secret magic hack that basically makes the universe give you everything you want. And then there was this woman who won every contest and every lottery and stuff like that. But basically, when you think about it this way, it is nothing else than a very powerful prime and a change of your filter. Because as you know, we perceive 400 billion things a second simultaneously, and we only consciously are aware of, of like 10 mostly five to seven. So there's a huge chance that you will miss a lot. And using this technique, again, I'm breaking it down now to the technicalities, not how it is marketed or how they teach it and stuff. But using this technique, you shift the filter so you become hyper aware for opportunities that are beneficial to you. And you become willing and ready to use them. And Opportunity meeting preparation equals luck. So you think suddenly you are super lucky and you suddenly, of course, you will, if your unconscious mind shows you the contest that it knows you can win, you win more. When you take part in every single contest there is, you will get a lot of wins. When you suddenly change your mindset to be more pers perceptive, you will find money on the streets like there is no tomorrow because you suddenly see it like, at the time where I was out every day, I found money on the street every day because I prime myself. Like I'm the luckiest person in the world. There's nobody who has more luck than me. I will find money every day. I will find money everywhere. And I literally did every day, sometimes even bills, not just coins. And I got stuff everywhere. I always get what I want. I always say it's like, I always get what I want because other people get what they want if they help me. And it's constantly like this. Still to this day, every time I need something in my life, something comes along that gives it to me or makes it possible so I can earn it. One way, shape or form, I always am lucky. And I have cultivated that thought. And the silver method is the same thing in a nutshell. Oh, I'm salviating. Salvia, I can't <laughs> wait to hear more. I can't two more weeks. Thank you two more so weeks. much. Two more weeks? One yes. more week. We meet every two weeks, right? Uh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. I, I get... I get very disappointed every Wednesday when I realize there's no, uh, no, um, you know, Adam and Misha. It's seriously Aww. disappointed. Me I too. Do. I wanted to speak to you last week. Oh, yeah. that's cute. There might be a slight <laughs> problem though, because next week, I, uh, sorry, in two weeks, I won't be here. Because, oh. yeah, I, from the 13th to the 20th, I will be in Italy with my family for our family vacation. And um. yeah, that's. That is one of the last few vacations I might have with my grandmother. And it's so beautiful to see oh. my brothers and my mom and my wife and I to enjoy some beautiful time in Italy. So I will Italy? not be available at the time. I'm sorry. Oh. But maybe, I don't we know, Daniel. Next week? Next week? Next week? Next Wednesday? Yeah. Do we have anything planned on the 9th? Like, are there you any other calls planned? Any any courses or so? Anything of Stefan, Luca, Mario? Let me take a check right now. On the ninth, we have yeah, the Genesis Evolutions call. It's going to uh -huh. be at, at one Eastern on the ninth. All yeah, right. that, that's going to end by two thirty. Hmm. Two thirty. So yeah, I mean, I'm open to that. We could meet at 2.30 that basically yeah. instead of in two weeks, we meet next week to cover for the time where I'm not here. I'm open to that. Yeah, but hold on. 2.30 what time? Yeah, EST, right? Uh, yeah, 2.30 Eastern Standard Time. So I'm not sure. So basically half an hour okay. later than the usual. That's call. fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's good. That's good. That's good. Cool. Yeah, then Great. we can talk about priming that and like, because there's a lot, basically the silver method is a very sophisticated form of self-hypnosis. Yeah. And oh. I can, oh wait, I wouldn't even say sophisticated. I would say it's a very simple form of it compared to what I learned later. And I can share a few techniques as well that double down on that. Cool. But I wanted to give you guys, like if we talk about the silver <laughs> method next week, I want to give you guys some homework. 
I want you to watch a very specific video by Darren Brown because that will prime you very well. I will put the link in the chat. Yeah, you, you, you've frozen, by the way. Yes, that's because I'm looking for the title right now. So one sec. <laughs> Thank you. So Darren Brown remote control. Lock, where is it? Rodrigo, do you have any more questions for um, Adam? No, no, I'm just enjoying like every minute here. This call is awesome. <laughs> it nice. is. I'm happy it? to hear that. I love yeah. it. I love it. But Prime... next time you gotta be you gotta be more involved. You're never involved. It's always Sal and myself. So you gotta be involved and yeah. also Alexa, because I know Alexa enjoys these calls, don't you, Alexa? <laughs> she will, she will, she will talk. <laughs> she will talk. Is it a threat? <laughs> Right. Talk. Oh, that's Jojo's Gestapo. <laughs> that she actually was a name. Really? Somebody used to call me the, the Gestapo. Yes. Really? Oh, yeah, oh, seriously, a nickname. Funny. All right, oh, no. here's the link. It is a double episode. The second, the second half of this um is the, the documentary on luck. And Darren Brown is a very famous mentalist. He's actually from the UK. So Jojo, maybe you know him. He is one of the What's biggest the inspirations oh, for Darren me. Brown, yeah. He is absolutely amazing. And he also had a special on faith where he literally hypnotized an atheist to believe in God, which was fantastic. But this one is something that I want you to watch, this double episode that I gave you. The second part that the remote control is irrelevant. But um, the... The luck one is important. Why? Because it literally shows how your mindset can influence your luck in a way that is absolutely ridiculous. Oh like they, he, he pretty much used the whole town as guinea pigs without them knowing it. Yeah. Wow. It was amazing. So please watch that. And next week we'll talk about when we also talk about the silver method. And that's it. A few hypnosis and Daniel, to influence your luck. Daniel, Daniel, please make a note of that link and please promote this particular lesson that's coming up next week, will you, Daniel? <laughs> that boy, that boy. We're so that boy. off right? the plot of AI. <laughs> oh no, 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 no! It's not. It, it, it's it, it's 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 all helping us along the road. Absolutely, that you know, everybody's loving it. Come on, everybody's loving it. We just missed a bit of your kind of input this week, Misha, but that that's fine. I'm sure you'll be you'll be one of the uh, guinea pigs next week. No, that's going to yes. be Rodrigo and Alexa are going to be next week. Okay, definitely. And especially we did talk a lot about AI today, actually. Like the okay, the mindset guys, stuff was. We did that. Yeah, we we talked so much about AI. We talked about prompts. <clears> we engineered a prompt. Uh, we talked about cold reading and how to implement it in copy and yes. in AI and stuff. And yeah, next week actually we can tie nice. that to AI as well because. Yes like this kind of influence and prediction and stuff and how to think about luck and how you influence the mindset. Once you understand what makes a person shift their perspective, you can put it into copy. And once you can put it into copy, you can put it in AI because it's nothing else than a, creating like a digital clone of a strategy or even yourself to accomplish a specific goal. So for example, you could literally train AI to coach you on thinking more positively. Oh, Yes. Okay. Wow. I, he brought it back. He brought it back. I feel like we're relevant. We're back to relevant. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe just tell <laughs> Stefan, uh, Luke, and Mario that um, the, the, the students wanted to be more lucky and wanted to learn new, new stuff, but we said, no, not in Genesis. Right. We will talk about only tech AI. only. No more <laughs> yeah. happiness for people. <laughs> <laughs> That's my job. Oh That's, my you know, God. I wasn't here today and all went off the rails. I get it. <laughs> oh, all right, guys. I wasn't I think, here, uh, so nobody deserves to be <laughs> right. No one happy, no happiness, no Misha, no happiness. Oh, God. Uh, all uh, right, guys. Oh, listen, we will I love see you, you next too. week. Yeah, I'll see you next week. Thank you so much. Indeed. So much Thank you. Thank and you have fun so with much. the books. Thank you. We you're will welcome. do. Oh, man. I've got them already. Thank you so much. And don't forget, Daniel, you're going to take all the copies of the books and the links and promote. Promote next Wednesday, seriously, will you? 
Definitely, I'm adding Daniel. the pound lower and get, I'm going to get it out of this. Thank you so much Great. indeed. Thank you very much, both of you. And thank you so much indeed. All the best. Really You're welcome. Everything. Talk soon. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.